The gentleman on the right-hand side of the screen is Chris Bedford, and I wonder if he agrees with me. Is a pause the same as a ceasefire? Is Biden bending? A pause would be exactly the same as a ceasefire. Uh, the president's administration is much more hostile, I think, to Israel than the president himself. He's a little bit more old school in the Democratic Party, but he's being pushed, like you said, from inside his administration, from members of Congress, from European countries to try and call a ceasefire. It's not, just as you showed, in Israel's interest whatsoever to stop this war, despite the unpopular pushback they're going to get from around the world and always get, until they neutralize that threat of Hamas. It's, it's a difficult, difficult thing. It's, it, General Petraeus said it would make Fallujah look like a cakewalk, that this was going to be an extremely dangerous urban combat that Israel has to deal with. But they're going to have to battle through this unpopularity and do it because it's important to their national security. Will we maintain our support? In other words, will we cave in the face of international pressure to cease fire or stop the invasion? I don't suspect that we will at this war. But Israel's got to be looking at opinion polls of Republicans, independents, and Democrats, got to be looking at American college campuses, got to be looking at some of the Hamas supporters in Congress and saying, we've relied and, and been able to count on the support of America, regardless of who was president, for about 70 years. And that probably, that support, I don't think, is something that Israel's going to be able to count on 20 years from now, maybe even 10 years from now. So they've got to be looking at our political situation and saying, we need to figure this out on our own because soon we really might be on our own. Good Lord. I'm going to change the subject and look at some polling we've just received. It's a new Quinnipiac poll, and it shows Trump and Biden practically tied in a 2024 rematch. That's been the case for the last few months. Recent events have not changed public opinion. But another result from that poll shows that if RFK Jr. is in the race, he gets 22% of the vote. In that case, Biden pulls slightly ahead of Trump. What do you make of all of this, Chris? I think it's a classic protest vote. It's not that surprising right now that Joe Biden and, and, and Donald Trump's poll numbers haven't really changed. There's very few people in this country where the American folks have such hardened opinions on as those two people. We know them. We've known them for decades and decades. Uh, and then you have RFK Jr. coming in. He's got an interesting message. He's got some good points. But largely, I think he's probably that 22 percent or way more than that in this country who just don't really want to see a rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, which is what we're going to get. You think we will? It's, it's Biden, Trump all over again, 2024. That's it. I don't see any way around it. Uh, barring some kind of medical catastrophe, which, of course, is a possibility at their advanced ages, they are, they are way far and ahead the contenders to be their party's nominees this time. And that's, I think, what we're going to see again. All right, Chris, thanks for joining us this morning. Always a pleasure. I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.